What up, everyone? So it's here. It's finally here. The video you've all been waiting for. And that is the video on custom framing. I'm going to show you how to do all your own framing so you don't have to waste money, hundreds of dollars, paying someone else to do it because it's really just not necessary. So ongoing with the whole collecting one-on-one -on -one series, uh, more tips and tricks on how to save money and do what you can to grow your collection without spending a shitload. So, um, basically, I will just show you what tools you'll need and I'll give you a brief description. It's really not that complicated. Once you know what you're doing and what to do, it's a very simple process. So, um, if, if this information gets out there, I don't see I don't see why anyone pays for framing, basically. It just seems like a waste of money. And I told you I showed off that Ninja Turtle piece, uh, the most recent art video I did. Framing for that could cost anywhere from, like I said, $500 to $1,000 for a frame. Like, who cares? And I paid, like, 40 bucks. So... I'll show you how to do it. So basically, I'll go through some tools that you need, and it's really simple. Um, first, you'll need just a pencil and an eraser, preferably. Exacto knife, a ruler of some kind. This is just a tape measure for the bigger sizes, and then a box cutter as well for your straight edge. And I don't have one here, but you'll also need. Um, I use a level. I wish I had it here. I'll probably I'll post a picture of it because I forgot to grab it. Um, a level is what I use, but you don't necessarily need a level because it doesn't need to be level. What you need is a straight edge, something that's firm is and it's going to stay in place that you can use basically as a ruler, like you would a ruler drawing a line. You need something that's going to have a hard edge so you can cut against it to make sure your lines are precise. So I have this big Home Depot uh, level that I use, but you can use smaller ones. And if it's a small enough cut, you can just use a metal ruler. So that's where you might want. It's up to you what you want to use. And then the most important piece is this little guy. And this is a mat cutter. So you press this down and you can see the little blade pops out right there. This is pretty much the only thing you actually need. Everything else is just there to make it easier. This is what you need. This is a mat cutter, and all this does essentially is put your cut at a 45 degree angle. Because anyone can cut anything with a, like a, a box cutter or an X-Acto knife or scissors, but the reason you do this, and I'll show this piece right here, the most recent one I've done, and I'll do a separate video on this one as well, but you'll see here, any framing, there's that little white edge right there, and that's because you're cutting mat board at a perfect 45 degree angle. And that's the other item you'll need is mat board. Here's what it looks like. And it's basically just like really thick cardstock. It's just like a little piece of compressed cardboard that comes in different shapes and colors. But yeah, all this mat cutter will do is make sure that your cut is at a perfect 45 degree angle so you'll have that little white line. And that's really what makes it look fancy. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, so that's what that'll do. And other than that, it's just about your own creativity and what you want to do with it. So like I was saying, what you're going to need to frame anything is mat board. This is very, very important because I'm sure a lot of you know that are trying to frame stuff. You're trying, you've gone out there and tried to find a frame to fit your specific piece of artwork and it's almost impossible to do. Especially a lot of you have said you collect um, original artwork, um, like comic artwork, like this. And if you do, then you know that it's a very irregular size. Comic artwork is always going to be 11 by 17. That's just standard board. Um, that's what they're always going to be on, and that's a really odd frame. There's not really 11 by 17s out there. You can find them. They actually have them at Target, but even still, if it's something's like a millimeter off and then it doesn't fit in there, it's just bad news. So that's why you have mat board. Mat board makes it so you can get any size frame. It doesn't matter as long as it's bigger than the piece. Doesn't matter what size it is, and then the mat board just fills in the spaces. So you just cut it to fit, and that's what you do there. So. Where you get this is always going to be either Aaron Brothers or Michaels. I'm sure there are other stores that have them too, like Blick has them and a bunch of other places, but they're usually pretty pricey. I stick to the hobby places because they always have coupons. Every single week, they have at least a 40% off coupon, if not a 50% off one. And then just buy one thing at a time. I always go back and forth between Michaels and Aaron Brothers so I can get things individually at half price. Now, I would recommend Aaron Brothers because they have a wide selection of colors. Michaels, not so much. They kind of only are good for black. If you're getting solid black, then Michaels is fine. All the other colors kind of suck. They're very bland. Um, they have a very, very limited selection, and the boards are much smaller. Whereas Aaron Brothers, they'll give you, I think the measurement is... Um, 
I think I want to say 30 by 40 inches. So that way if you get a board, you don't have to buy a new one each time. You can use one and then save that for later for more framing and you can make like three or four pieces out of one board. Um, so yeah, that's where you'd get those. But obviously if you find any other ones, then go there. But generally at Aaron Brothers, a I'm pretty sure it's 30 by 40. I'll have to double check. But for that size, they charge $14 and they always have a half off coupon. So I get it for seven bucks. So if you find it for cheaper, you know, go ahead, go for it. But if not, then never mind. And then Michaels will only have 24 by 36. That's the only size they have. And it's again, pretty much only good for black. So any piece that you want to frame, um, it's just up to your own art style. It's for this one, like I have the art page here and I just kind of look and see what colors are there. This is Mega Man and Sonic. So I went with a dark blue and a light blue because Mega Man has both blues. Sonic has blue. Um, it's just a very dominant color in there. So I'll, I'll change it up every once in a while. And you don't have to double matte. You can do single matte. It's totally up to you. I just think double matte looks like really professional. It makes it look really nice and not something that's just thrown together. It really gives it that special touch to it. So that's what I always like to do. But that's totally up to you, what you feel like doing. And the cool thing about it is even the most basic, when you're doing it yourself, even the most basic framework and matting job, uh, versus like the most crazy extravagant job it's only like a few dollars difference so it's just up to you how much work you want to put into it but there's really not much of a difference when you're paying to get a frame there's hundreds of dollars of difference but when you're doing it yourself it doesn't matter and the same thing with the frame you just pick out a frame like I said anything bigger I usually for something like this if I'm doing a lot of them, I'll just get this like standard black frame, but it has kind of a thick frame to it. So a lot of cheap frames have that little black skinny line around it. I think that looks really cheap. So I at least try to get this and this, I don't know if you can see how well you can see it, but there's some texture to it. It's got like a little bump there and there's a little embevel to it. So it's kind of nice, but this is like the cheapest I'll go. And I get these at Target and I think it's like $12.99 or $14.99, something like that. So this is pretty basic. But for like the Ninja Turtles one, you guys saw um, a very extravagant frame that's like molded tin or sometimes sculpted wood. Those are called gallery frames. And that's what you would see in a gallery. That's when you go to a museum. Those are the kind of frames you have. And for a special piece like Ninja Turtles 44, that's what I would go with. But again, just personal preference. So for a frame and comic artwork, I almost go always go with 18 by 24. <laughs> It seems to be just right for the 11 by 17 picture and then putting two of the comic, I always put the cover and then the interior page side by side, kind of diagonal. This one I didn't do with, but I'll show other examples of where I do do that. So that's almost always what I do. And then past that, just use your best judgment, anything bigger and just go with that. And if you're buying gallery frames, go to Aaron Brothers or Michaels, use a half off promo code or something like that and get it that way. So on to how we actually do this. Very simple. So you're going to want to, you're going to, want to map this out beforehand. If you're doing single or double map, um, I'll start with the exterior color first. You just kind of use your head, do some math, um, figure out how big it is. So if you're doing, say this is 18 by 24, you're doing framing something that's 11 by 17. It's one inch shorter, so you know you have a half inch of room to work with there. So just measure a straight line across, half inch on the top, half inch on the bottom. Draw the big square, draw some small squares. I don't need to teach you guys how to draw some squares, but just map it out and measure it exactly. And then the only thing you need to know with this tool, you just need to know it always needs to face in. So wherever you're cutting a hole, this blade has to point inward. So you gotta be careful, because if you do it the wrong direction, it'll cut the wrong way and it won't leave that perfect angle. It'll be an inward angle, which is what you don't want. So make sure this is always facing inward. And I'll try and post some pictures and hopefully make a little short video right now of me cutting into it to show you. But yeah, just make sure it's facing in, have your line drawn, have your straight edge with your either ruler or your uh, level, whatever you're using. Put it up against it, press the little tab down and scooch it along. So it's not going to glide like super easy, so you got to be careful and make sure you're always replacing blades to keep them sharp because if they're not sharp, it may do a little like jerking motion and you don't want that. And make sure you put a lot of pressure down because you don't want it veering off in a weird way because it does that sometimes. Also, when you're cutting, make sure you put down some kind of um, cover. I usually just do this on the floor because I don't have a big enough desk to do it, but I just get a standard piece of cardboard, any box, and just flatten it out. I make sure it doesn't have a bunch of creases in it. Um, sometimes like the poster frames have a little piece of cardboard in the back. I'll use that to put underneath the, the, the mat board so I'm not cutting my desk or anything like that. 
and that's what I'll use on the bottom and then I'll measure it out and then just go through and cut the holes one at a time. Go four ways. You got to make sure you have room because you're going to be turning this all four ways to make sure it's always facing inward and that should do it. And then obviously if you're doing a double mat, once you have the holes cut out on your exterior color, put your again another 18 by 24 mat board underneath it. Just trace the holes you cut onto that mat board and then measure in like say a quarter of an inch depending on how much you want. Again, personal preference. I usually do like I try to do like an inch of exterior color and maybe a half inch of interior color, but it's totally up to you. You can do it 50-50, you can do it all kinds of different ways. It's just personal preference, so it's totally up to you. And normally when you buy the stuff, they charge like per cut, per hole, and it's like, it's not that hard to do. It takes two seconds to cut it out, and, and that's pretty much it. Um, frames can vary a little bit from size to size just like really small like millimeter differences so I always make sure if I'm measuring something 18 by 24 I measure it a little bit smaller to make sure it'll fit in the frame not much like I said a, a centimeter maybe a millimeter something like that just to make sure you have some room and it'll pop in there with no problem so yeah that's pretty much it um so when you're buying frames like this like I said at Target it comes with everything you'll need it comes with a little plexiglass it comes with backing and it usually comes with some kind of something on there to uh, hang the picture with, so you're good to go. But when you're going really fancy gallery style frames, um, those are actually canvas frames. So those you have to do a little more work. The Ninja Turtles one is a canvas frame, that's why it's that gallery style. Uh, those are gonna be the more extravagant ones. If you wanna keep it simple, no worries. Any frame store will have it all packaged together for you. All you gotta do is pop off the back, put in your artwork, you're good to go. When you're talking about something really extravagant and doing, if you want to like paint the frame, like I'll show a picture of one I painted myself, different ones that I've painted and done some cool jobs on, um, that you might have to go with a canvas frame. And what you'll do for that is you'll buy the frame and it's just the frame. There's nothing in it. You'll be able to poke your hand through it. And then go somewhere super cheap like Target and get those really, really cheap, thin, crappy poster frames. The one where it just has that little black sliver and you just pop it off like that you put posters in of the same size. Pop all the sides off, use that plexi, use the backing, pop it into the canvas frame, and there you go. You're good to go. Now, some people prefer glass frames, but I really don't. There's no reason for them. It's, it's this weird concept of people thinking just because something costs more, it's better. When it really isn't. And if you talk to people that do professional framing, they'll tell you plexiglass is a better option. Because, worst case scenario, if something falls off the wall, you're moving, you're putting things up, accidents happen all the time, the glass shatters, it can very easily damage the artwork. And that has happened to me. I, before I did this myself, I got one professionally framed, cost like a hundred something dollars for it, and it was on the wall, we had an earthquake, it fell off, shit happens, but the problem was, the glass shattered and slit right down this original painting that I had. So there's this huge cut mark down it from the glass. Plexiglass is never going to do that. And you can't tell the difference unless you're like touching it or holding it. When you see it on a wall, you really can't see any difference. So that you're fine with plexiglass. If you want to spend the money, go for it. But you'll have to get that custom cut or buy a frame that already has glass in it and take it out. I don't think it's worth the money. I think it's a waste. And when you're doing custom framing, they have all this like UV protection glass and stuff like that. And it's like, that's such a fucking waste. Like you spend hundreds of bucks on that. It's like, why would you, why would your picture ever be out in the sun? Like, why would you leave a window open where it's shining on your original artwork? Like, are you a moron? Close your fucking blinds, you tard. Like, you're never, are you going to leave it outside? Like, yo, no, you don't need UV protection. You don't need any of that crap. This plexiglass will do just fine. And when you're putting it in the canvas frame, uh, I usually just tape the back if it fits. Sometimes you'll need fasteners. And if you go to Aaron Brothers or Michaels, they'll show you. They're just little metal pieces put little screws on to make sure it fastens, but that's just being extravagant. That you don't, not really necessary. You don't really need that to do that. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, hopefully I had time to post some little short videos of how to do these things and the process of it. But other than that, yeah, it's just up to creativity. Um, this one I actually messed up on. So you can see normally I'll have the interior page, uh, like catty corner to the cover page. But I just wasn't paying attention. I've been buying a lot of covers lately and I accidentally cut the mat this way and I didn't want to do it all over again. So I took the picture of the cover and just split it in two 
and put it over the exterior color. So, and like you, you saw with the Ninja Turtles one where I did like the four color corners with mattes, it's just being creative. It's just using your own imagination and doing stuff cool, which you don't have to do. You can keep it simple, keep it squares, do single mat, double mat, triple mat if you want, it doesn't matter. Um, anything you want to it. The only thing you're not going to be able to do with this is curved edges. That's what you're going to have a problem with. Uh, pretty much everything you're going to do is going to be straight parallel lines and boxes. If you want to get pretty with it and try and use your X-Acto knife to do like curved edges, you can try it, but it's going to be damn near impossible to keep it at a 45 degree angle while you're doing custom stuff. And other than that, it's just up to decorating. Sometimes I'll draw some stuff on my mat board. I have this really cool piece that, um, from Street Fighter comic of Akuma, and I just had I tried something different. And I had some extra space on there, so I just drew some of the Japanese characters that Akuma has on his back. And there's like an Adventure Time one where I paint the outside of the frame. You, you know, just do whatever you can. And if you guys are interested in that stuff, I can do a separate video on like how to um, paint things and creative ways to do things. If you guys are interested in that, I'm more than happy to do that. Just let me know. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's literally that simple. This is a pretty short video, but that's all there is to it. That's it. You find a frame you like, you cut your own mat, you put it together. I usually, oh, one thing I didn't mention, when you're putting this together, you want to use non-destructive tape. So, um, when I'm framing original artwork, I usually have them, these pieces right here, they're usually in some kind of sleeve, um, cause I don't like to tape, put tape directly on it. So they're usually in some kind of plastic sleeve or some kind of plastic wrap or something like that, but not always, but I usually do. And then I just use masking tape. It's strong enough to hold it and it's non-destructive. So you gotta be careful not to use like duct tape or something like that because you'll damage the artwork. So make sure you use non-destructive tape. And sometimes uh, when you're putting mats on top of each other, if you're double matting, I'll just put glue in there, any kind of glue, super glue, something like that, and just to stick them together. Or you can even use tape if you really wanted to. So that's just something to know. But that's all you got to do. So let me know if you guys have more questions. Um, I do this so often, so it's, uh, it's hard for me to think like questions you might have. I tried to explain it simply. I'm sure there's a bunch of things that I skipped over that I, I'm just not thinking of. So let me know in the comments. If you have questions, uh, comments, concerns, you want to see a different style of video, and we'll go into that. And someone else mentioned they saw some um, things in my room where it's three-dimensional. It's not artwork. It's like the Jason mask I have and some other things. So I think I'm going to put that in a separate video as well um, to try and keep these videos shorter. And I think that's a whole different genre of framing and custom things you have to do. So if you guys are interested in that too, I'll make that as well. And yeah, let me know what you guys thought. I hope this was helpful to you and we'll talk about it in the comments. And I hope to continue this series and help you guys out as much as possible. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments and we'll talk about it more. Thank you for watching. Love y'all. Peace.